Hello, and welcome to another session of Fundamentals of Parenting. And I'm Jamie Buckley, and if you can tell, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. But even better news is Kathy Lynn has taken most of the children up north because Grandma is getting out of the hospital today. And so we're very grateful for that. Today I want to talk about un eliminating unhelpful emotions. And, um, you know, it's only a lack of control you should fear not feeling too much. I've talked about this with my children. It, it's, it's okay that you feel angry. It's okay that you feel frustrated. It's okay that you feel sad. As long as these things are not let out out of your control. There's, I don't believe that there's such a thing as being too angry. Only if you let that anger out and affect the people around you. Um, have you ever wondered if how you feel gets in the way of what you should do because I know I have we are creatures of emotion by nature at least that's what I believe um, but those very emotions can grant us strength to barrel through something difficult but it can also hinder us from making the right choices at times emotions can taint perspectives can even taint love and if we're not careful, can be the cause of harm to our children. I have a little story for you. Many years ago, one of my children made some bad choices and got into trouble. And one of the things I've told each of my children as I've raised them is, please don't go where I can't follow and protect you. And this child made some choices that took him out of my my protection and eventually um, into the arms of the state. When my wife and I were at the courthouse waiting, we noticed that more than half a dozen youth, all older than our child, were there with their mothers, not a father to be seen among them, which I thought was weird. But the odd thing was each one of them had a lawyer with them. Now, I would recommend any time dealing with the law that you have a lawyer. I'm not against that. But the thing is, is that over the course of the next 30 minutes sitting there, I heard each and every lawyer say in one form or another, this isn't your child's fault. To which the mother would coddle her child, who more often than not looked bored. Now, I'd considered a lawyer, but felt wrong about it. So after discussing the issue with my wife, we both agreed on what we were there for. Our child had broken the law, and we were there to accept full responsibility and accountability for breaking that law. Yes, we felt a bit scared, a lot concerned, but our why defined what kind of parents we were and what we required of our children. And part of that was to be law-abiding citizens people who took full responsibility for their actions, which came as the, a complete shock to the prosecuting attorney. Um, where, where's your lawyer, she asked as she ushered us into the meeting room. Well, we don't have one, I explained. My child is guilty. He turned himself in. We're here to take responsibility for his choices. She sat down and she smiled at us. She said, I had the chance to interview your son. He's not like the kids out there. He was so proper. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Please, thank you. And he confessed everything. She leaned forward then. He doesn't belong here. I'm convinced he's a good boy who made a bad choice. So I'd like to help. And she did just that. Our son was placed in a wonderful program that we couldn't afford, free of charge by the order of the judge. Our boy graduated with flying colors to the standing ovation of the courtroom led by the judge himself. Successes like these and youth like you are why those of us in this courtroom chose this profession, he said, beaming at our child. Then he turned to the caseworker. 
Is there any reason why the state should not return full custody of this young man back over to his parents? The caseworker shook his head. Your Honor, there is nothing the state could do that the Buckleys couldn't do ten times better. They're parenting rock stars. I don't have to admit, I think that's the nicest compliment I've ever received. Now, the why. Parenting is an emotional business. You love your kids. We worry about our children. We experience pain and anxiety anxiety over these lives we brought into the world. But our why also helps us to keep our emotions in check so we can do the right things for the right reasons. Sometimes, even when it goes against everything we actually want. And that's an important thing to consider. There are times where you need to do the right thing because it's the right thing. And long term, it's going to be the right choice, even though you might want something else. The how. I have to admit that this is one of the most difficult aspects of being a parent for me personally. What we go through when raising our children is hard to describe and often makes no sense to those who either don't have kids or they just don't care. Take a close look at the why you've been crafting. This document, or in my own case, a collection of documents, is an agreement with myself, outlining how I will conduct myself. It also outlines why I will conduct myself the way I will, because the goals and objectives I have for my child and my family as a whole are worth more than my emotions. Remind yourself of that. Because if your emotions are more important than the goals you set for yourself, you might want to rethink them. Conclusion There's a time and a place for our emotions. Our why is a tool to help us keep those emotions in their proper place so we can accomplish our parenting goals. I don't personally think there's such a thing as too much emotion. I mentioned this in the beginning. Not as long as we keep them in check so they they don't ruin what matters most. Our kids. What to do next. Take a personal inventory of your emotions. List any situations where you have allowed your emotions to take the lead over your principles. Get feedback from your spouse if you can. As there are oftentimes situations that we miss and we can use another person's perspective, it's wise. Make a plan on how you'll keep your emotions in check the next time you find yourself in a similar similar situation. You've got this. You can do this. And it's worth it. Please think of two to three people that you can share this with and let them know about this podcast, these videos, and this blog. And we'll see you next time.